Today, Hillary Clinton made a speech in which she connected Donald Trump to the alt-right, and it was not completely unjustified. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. I am Van. We are all the LFR family. If you click play, you are now part of the family, man. So welcome. I right, go ahead and kick off your shoes. Unless your feet stink, keep your shoes on. If your feet stink, if they don't stink, feel free to take off your shoes, get comfortable, all right? And hit that like button. Hey, everybody who has been purchasing hats and hoodies, thank you so much. I'm wearing one right now that's just very extremely bright with the daggone green screen, and it's messing it up a little bit. It got a little ashy, ashy green screen, ashy. But it feels comfortable, man. It's nice, nice red outwork yesterday, man. Y'all should go check them out, man. If you do purchase one, though, put in LFR10 for 10% off and free shipping all across America. Now, also, one last thing. I'm extremely excited about our sponsor. We have a sponsor now called Blue Monster Prep, all right? To prevent any type of catastrophe in your home, for you and your family, if you want to be prepared, you need to check out BlueMonsterPrep.com. All right? Make sure you put in code LFR. If you purchase anything, and anyone who purchases over $100 worth of things, they spend more than $100, they will also receive an emergency food sampler and some extra goodies. All right? Okay? Some extra goodies and um, an emergency food sampler. Man, go to Blue Monster Prep and get your family right, man. Don't go broke, though, if you got the money for it or if you can save up some so you can go and get certain things here and there, then you want to be prepared. All right. All right. So that's it. So back to Jesse Lee Peterson and Ben Shapiro. When we first left off this conversation, Ben Shapiro was asked, um, um, how does he think? Um, does he think that Trump would do a good job with the economy? And Ben Shapiro's answer blew my mind, actually. It, it blew my mind, man. So um, I really wanted to start that off with that so that y'all can hear that. And we was going to continue from there. If you haven't seen the first part of this um, this conversation that I did, feel free to go check it out. I'm going to put part one on it. All right. All right. Let's get to it, man. These guys are having a good conversation, good debate. I didn't know this about Ben Shapiro. Stopping Muslim from coming in until he can figure out what's going on in order to keep America safe first. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in favor of what he called extreme vetting. Right. That I agree with. Like a blanket right. ban on all Muslims, I think, is silly because people can just lie about whether they're a Muslim or not. So. Do you believe that he would bring jobs back? No. You don't believe No, that. I think he'll destroy the economy. <laughs> really? His free trade policies are disastrous. Amazing. Um, what do you think of the, uh, the never Trump people? What do you think of them? There are people who say, I would never vote. Are you part of that group? That's mm -hmm. it, the never Trump group. I mean, I've tweeted it before, yeah. Really? Sure. So huh. are you a but never I mean, Trump I, person? So I'm a never Trump person in the sense that as Trump currently is, I would never vote for him. Ooh. If he changes, if he becomes another human, then I would vote for him. You can only vote based on the evidence that's in front of you. I wrote a piece for what? National Review where I said, never say never Trump, basically, which is, you know, if Trump changes, then I'd be open to voting for him. What I don't understand. This brother said, man, he has to jump out of his body and run as somebody else. <laughs> what the heck? Bruh, he really had an issue with Trump. This dude did. <laughs> Sheesh. You had more issues with Trump than I did, bruh. That, now, that's true. Ben Shapiro had more issues with Trump than I had. And this is this this is when I I was being fed by nothing but MSNBC and CNN telling me many many ways to hate him, don't like him because this and this and this and this, dude. Mr. Shapiro got more reasons not to like him than I do. Than I did. All right. Sheesh. This blows my mind, man. Understand? We've gone through so much <laughs> mm -hmm. in the last seven years, especially. Yeah. Why are the people who are against Trump, voting for Trump, why are they so willing to just give up the country? Because that's what will happen if no. they don't get Trump in. Why are they so willing to just give up? What is it about Trump that would cause them, turn them off in that way, that they would just give up the country? So as, as I say, I, it's a matter of risk calculation. Your calculation is that if Trump loses, the country is over. My calculation is that if Trump loses, Hillary will be the second worst president in American history for four years, and then we can run an actual conservative and take her out. That's my calculation. But that's what we said about Obama. Once well, he's out of there, no, I, I never said that put, about Obama. I felt if, if Obama, someone in. I felt if Obama won the first time, he would win the second. 
So how about the eighth year? You know, he's been there eight years. Isn't it time to take him out and not put his sister in? Of course it's horrifying. Listen, Because you know that Hillary Clinton is Barack Obama in a dress. Yeah, I mean, she's a less effective politician. She's more corrupt. In your book. Holy crap. Sheesh. Man, won't you actually just, just say whatever's on your mind, brother? <laughs> Don't hold back, man. Don't hold back, man. He's holding back. He's not telling the full truth. <laughs> ben Shapiro just giving it to you, man. He don't see. That's one thing that I do respect about Ben Shapiro. That dude does not care. He will go straight, a straight line and say exactly what he got to say. And he does not care how you take it, who takes it, whatever type of way. This dude is just going to give you the business, period. He's just going to tell you what it is. Wow. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, I don't know if I love the fact that they don't support o Obama so much, man. And I know, I know, like I said before in the last video, I did not follow Barack's policies. I just saw a black family in in um, in the White House, and I thought that the White House was about to be a black house, and we was going to start having cookouts, and they was going to be giving away free watermelons, and, 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 and it was going to be kumbaya forever. That's what I thought. And I thought they was going to say, hey, everybody, slavery is over. Then there would be crickets because everybody would be like, um, slavery been over. Well, racism is over. Racism is kind of over as well. I mean, people are starting to, tr I mean, people are still trying to do it. I think racism was like a trend. <laughs> <laughs> racism was like a, a new dance it was like a new way to get things done and that faded out just like um high top fades it faded out like bell bottoms it faded out like butterfly collars it faded out like wearing your chest uh, wearing your dad going dress shirt open and having a whole bunch of curly chest hairs in a big old jerry curl it faded out like jerry curls. Hmm? Men ain't putting activator all in their hair no more. Racism faded out, man. Racism was a fad. Racism was a trend. Racism was a business call, something that they tried in order to get things popping. And guess what? It started dying and dying and dying and dying and dying and dying and dying. And it got so freaking small. Some people hold on to it, but guess who hold on to it the most? The people who want to be the biggest victims, whoever the people is that want to be the biggest victims, they are the ones that's holding on to racism the most and they are ruining things, man. They're not allowing us to move on. But yeah, this right here, sheesh. Bullies, you say uh, to hit back twice as hard. Mm -hmm. You remember saying that, right? Trump does that. Do you admire that about Trump? Uh, it depends if he's hitting the right target. So when he hits the right target, yes. What I've said from the very beginning about Trump is he's a hammer in search of a nail. Sometimes he hits a nail, Sometimes he hits a puppy. Lately, he's been hitting lots, <laughs> lots of puppies. So there are lots of puppy brains all over the floor. Give me the example of the right target. Okay, so the right target. <laughs> that was good, Ben. That was good, Ben. I always said that Trump was a hammer looking for a nail. Now, when he hits a nail, it's cool. But when he hits a, um, when he misses target, he hits a puppy. That's what's up, man. That's, that was funny. Target, for example, there was, there was one point where, uh, where Jorge Ramos, uh, was was in one of his press conferences and Jorge Ramos started yelling at him and he basically said, Jorge, you need to get out. Right? Okay, that's right. fine, right? I mean, oh, wrong target. Journalist writes a bad piece about him. He goes up and makes fun of him for being disabled. Do you admire Trump at all? No, I find him, I think he's a despicable man, but it's, but. Really? Yes. I noticed Personally that, and, I've noticed and that over the last, I've been paying attention to politics for about 28 years now. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that the Democrats, along with the liberal media, mm -hmm. they say what they want about the Republicans. They yep. call them racist. They say they hate women. They hate the gays. They hate your mama. Uh, and just <laughs> every year, year in and year out. Mm -hmm. And the Republican representatives have not stood up for themselves. They allowed that to happen. So I'll take that correction. That's right. That I do admire about Trump. Yeah. If, if Trump if Trump is hit by the wrong person, he hits them back. Oh, that sure. I admire about Trump. I just think he has no discipline. I wish he had some discipline. What I've noticed, though, because he's hidden back, if they say something about him, he's back. He, he's right. on them. He hit back. Um, and the Democrats are not accustomed to that. 
Right, that's true. They are not that's at true. all. So they're having like a hissy fit about it. Right. The problem As though is, they have no idea what's going on when I they've agree. been doing it so long. But what I don't understand, why are the Republicans going along, you know, the voters mm -hmm. going along with the Democrats on hitting Trump back when they know what we have gone through as Republicans? Well, and I mean, they're, they're only screaming because they're not accustomed to being. No, I mean, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased when Trump hits the right targets. Again, I think that he just chases squirrels all over the place. And the Gold Star family is a perfect example, right? So you got this Gold Star family, and they go up and they say something that is very, very political, right? They make a political statement about Trump that they don't have to make at the DNC. And instead of just letting it go, or instead of doing the George W. Bush thing where he says they're a Gold Star family, they have a right to their opinion, I disagree. He feels the need to, to start going after the, the wife, right, who's just standing there. She's literally just standing there. And he's like, well, she, she's the one, right? I mean, what, does she have anything to say? He's like, well, wait, wait a second, Donald. Like, just calm down. Like, take five seconds, recalibrate. When that guy... I mean, he's, he's an aggressive person. He's always ready to, like, go at it. Like, the guy is... Who said something? Huh? Can we, can we go handle business or what? We're going we gonna to do what we came here to do? He's all about business. Let's handle business. Let's handle business. And if you're in the way of handling the business, then why are you even here? Like, shut up, move, leave. Like, we are here to handle business. We are here to run a country. We are here to do this. We are here to do that. This is serious business. This is the most serious business in the world. It's extremely serious. So we got to get it done. And he was far more busy than any other president that I can ever remember. That's why he was always so active on social media because the dude, he didn't believe in breaks. He didn't believe in taking time off. They never had such a go-getter inside of the um, inside of the um, the White House, man, or running for presidency. Somebody that was that much of a go-getter. That's what go-getters do. They're active. They're busy, and they don't. They, they are going to come off as not having discipline to people who operate under nothing but tight discipline. Like, I do whatever I am supposed to do properly, and I'm not, like, no, that's not how Trump moved. Trump moved by by the beat of his own drum. He, he That's how he moved, man. And he didn't give a damn about whoever had something to say about it. That's how he moved. That's something that I respected about him. It's also something I didn't like about him because, you know, he was giving CNN and MSNBC hell. <laughs> he was also giving them a whole bunch of stuff to make fun of and boost their ratings. And ever since, see, when their friends, when their friends came together and got rid of him on social media, so to speak, um, it actually ruined things for it. MSNBC and CNN because they didn't realize that a lot of their ratings was coming from him. Now they don't have anything to talk about. Spoke at the Democrat and National Con yeah, Convention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Khan. Yeah. He has the right name, by the way, Khan. And when he spoke about Donald Trump at the convention and Donald stood up for himself, I'm like, yes, finally, I I'm happy to see this happening. Because that guy was used by the Democrats to attack Trump. I agree. They put his little wife there. They put him there. They wanted this false sympathy for these I mean, people. You, you know I'm so not a they fan of used, that. So they used this man to attack Trump. And it was good that Trump attacked him back. And Trump did not attack his son. He attacked the man who attacked him. Right. And he simply well, asked, to be fair, well, he why is it that too. his wife is just standing there? And, and the point to that, I believe, is that... Muslims, the, the so-called religion itself, doesn't allow women to speak up. I think that's what he's trying to say, it, but again... But that's what Donald that's, said. I, I, right, and I think that's stupid. Why is that stupid? I think that's stupid because he has no evidence that that's why she wasn't speaking. So instead, he puts himself out on a limb. That's why he said, why is she standing there not I, I, speaking? I, I, he okay. asked the yes, question. He always does that kind of stuff. He always says things like, lots of people say that JFK <laughs> was shot by, by Rafael Cruz, right? Lots of people say this, lots of people say that. Well, lots of people say you're a moron, dude. I mean, like, <laughs> lots I'm of people say lots of stuff. I'm surprised that you are not enjoying this because of the way Republicans, especially this. outspoken <laughs> Republicans, yeah. have been treated. I would think this would be refreshing. I spent my entire career fighting for a conservative movement that is not racist, right? Fighting for a conservative movement that cannot be boxed into the corner by, a la by the left. Whoa, that is not racist.
Please explain that one. Please explain that one. Ben, ben Shapiro said he spent all this time fighting for a conservative party that is not racist. Not racist. Okay, where is he going with this? Be refreshing. I spent my entire career fighting for a conservative movement that is not racist, okay. right? Fighting for a conservative movement that cannot be boxed into the corner by, a le by the left. Uh -huh. Today, Hillary Clinton made a speech in which she connected Donald Trump to the alt-right and it was not completely unjustified. What the Democrats have been trying to portray us as for my entire lifetime right, is a bunch of racist, sexist, bigot, right. homophobes who hate the poor and all this stuff. And Trump, because he has no discipline and no capacity to rein himself in, and because he really is not a conservative at heart, I mean, I know people who know him well, he's a Democrat. Because of, because of this, you know, he, is, he, he gives conservatism a bad name and he's gonna lose by 10. So we don't even get the pleasure of defeating Hillary Clinton in the process. But I think, uh... wow. Bruh. <laughs> Sheesh. Man. You know, you, you know, your grandparents used to tell you, um, um, why do you need enemies when you got friends? Because sometimes people who support you, they're just as bad as your daggone enemy, man. Not to say that Ben Shapiro is, is a bad person, but he, he was just honest. He was just honest. He just was not a Trump supporter at all. He was just honest. He was he was honest for himself. He was just saying, like, this is how I feel about him, and I don't like him. I don't like his character. I think he's fly by night. I don't think it's this serious. This was August 30, 31, 2016, and uh, Ben Shapiro clearly did not think that Trump had a chance in hell of winning. And as a matter of fact, he wanted Ted Cruz to beat him. That's what he wanted to, um, to win. So, wow. Wow. I'm, my mind is blown, man. It is. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, man. Y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van. And now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing per usual. Love y'all. Bye.